Hi everyone, Letty back. Hope you had all had a lovely weekend. And um, I'm going to carry on doing the envelope folio. Uh, so today I'm just going to finish off matting and pockets. And then I'll do another video of um, like finishing touches and how to make the little notepads. So in the last video we did our slot pockets on these pages we did the um, belly band and the tuck spot and the big pockets on that flap and we did the pocket on the other flap this time I'm going to do under the flaps so again I've cut all my mats out and inked them but I will tell you the measurements and it's explain it as I go now under the these flaps I do ghost pockets so I'll do those I won't do those first I'm going to do under the flip envelope because um, under this one I just basically do or did a um, I'm just going to move that because that's for my back cover and I don't want to lose it so um, under this envelope I just do a large tuck spot in the corner so what I've done is I've gone through and I've chosen my papers um, obviously how you do it's up to you in the Tim Holtz papers you actually get two of each papers so for this one I used um, I just want to explain how I did it. I used this page and I cut this side out and then on the second page I just cut this out to use as my tuck spot so you're still getting that page but I've used an element of that page for the pocket. I do that quite a lot with the Tim Holtz papers. So yeah, so the um, for this one the measurements on the mat are um, six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths so it's six and seven eighths eight and seven eighths now um you can glue this shut or you can leave it open it's up to you in a lot of mine i glue it shut because i'm going to put a journal there and i think it's fiddly getting stuff in but it's up to you now my envelope does have a slight slant to it where it goes in I don't worry about that I cut it straight and I just glue it over so it has a straight edge if you want to try and get it to mat to the shape then feel free but I don't it's your choice and I don't do it <laughs> so yeah so I've cut that again six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths and I've inked it so I'm just going to stick that one down I have to say I'm so happy with how the tutorials going and the response I'm getting it's just amazing and um, I'm now finally getting very close to my first thousand subscribers and that again is something I just find totally overwhelming and unbelievable. I never had, would have thought that I would ever get that far. Uh, I think I have about four or five left to get to my thousand and um, like I say when I get to the thousand I will give this folio away in a giveaway so hopefully by next week I'll be able to do that and just smooth that down and then like I say I didn't actually do it to a set measurement this tuck spot I just cut out the image because I thought it fitted in nicely so I cut out the image you can do what you like obviously you can do a specific measurement or whatever but I just winged it with this and I just did 
cut out a part of the page. Now this I'm just going to do as a tuck spot, so I'm just going to ink down these two sides, not ink, I inked all of the sides, I'm going to glue it down these two sides. And just glue that into place really, and that's all I do for that page because it has an envelope on top I don't really want to add anything onto it like decorations or clusters or anything because I'm trying to keep the bulk down but I also am trying to keep the kind of collaged layered look of his papers if you understand what I mean Okay, let's talk ghost pockets. Now, Tim Holtz papers are perfect for ghost pockets. Um, and I love ghost pockets because you don't lose you don't lose the image. It stays you just don't lose the image. So I love ghost pockets. Now, if you don't have Tim Holtz pop pages or you're using your own and you don't have two of the same image because to do a ghost pocket you need two of the same image or two of the same papers if you don't have that you do not have to do a ghost pocket you could just do any pocket under here I am at the moment doing um, another folio which is this one I'm doing this folio and this one is using um, a scrapbook pad for the backing papers and an RTMA's kit for my pockets and decorations and because I've done a scrapbook pad in this one I'll just move those because those are the journaling cards I'm not quite done with uh, yeah because I'm using a scrapbook pad as my backing papers I have not done ghost pockets on this one so I'm just going to show you what you could do instead of ghost pockets so under my flaps I've just pretty much used a um, it's like a postcard or an image from the kit as a pocket and I've picked the biggest thing I could find which I shouldn't have done and then see it's just a pocket it still looks nice it doesn't have to be a ghost pocket anything you want to put under there is fine it is your choice it's your preference and under my other flap on this one again I've done a ghost I haven't done a ghost pocket it's um, an image from the kit with some fussy cutting and some a little bit of collaging on the top flat collaging and it's just a pocket so you don't think you have to do put ghost pockets because obviously you don't this is your folio you do it the way you want to do it but I'm going to show you how to do the ghost pockets. So I get two pages like this and I cut out the section I want. So I've cut out this section and it measures at um, six, six and seven eighths across and eight and seven eighths down. So it's six and seven eight by eight and seven eight and I've inked it and then we just stick this down so that's pretty simple let's stick it down hoping my videos don't cut out today but if they do I will just carry on and then merge them as best I can. Don't have the best video set up, but I'm trying to do as good as I can with the setup I have. So don't forget to ink your page. I did ink mine. It really does take some pressing down on the type of fabric I've used for this one. I don't. Now, 
to do the actual pocket I will um, take the exact same image let me move this aside so I take the image that's for my cover sorry let's move those aside as well so I'll take the same image and I will cut it to the same width which is six and seven eighths now how big you do your pocket is up to you it's your preference there's no saying you have to go four inches up or five inches up or whatever you do what you want to do so this is going to be six and seven eighths which is there now i'm cutting from the bottom up can you see where i'm there now i will only cut as far up as i want my pocket so if you want your pocket to here you cut to here if you want it to here you cut it to here you cut as far up as you want your pocket now I'm probably going to do mine to about that line there so I'm going to cut to there or just over there just over now if you want to you can turn it round and cut it there at the top where you want it but with my ghost pockets I tear it I don't cut it now with a lot of them I will cut it at an angle, tear it at an angle or a squiggly line or whatever. But with these ones, I was tearing them at a straight line and use my ruler for it. But I can't find my ruler. Where's my ruler gone? Hmm. Do you know, no matter how much I prepare, there is always something not where I want it. Hmm. I don't know where I put that now. Okay, I don't have my metal ruler, so I'm going to try and use my Tim Holtz plastic one. But you just hold it. Um, I'm going to do it at that line there, I think. And then you just tear it. Simple as that. Oh, that's going to bug me where my rule is gone. Okay, so we've just torn it. And then that will go there like that. Um, yep. Yeah like that now when it comes to inking you can ink across the top if you want but then you will see the ink line when you put it down I don't particularly want to ink mine because I don't always want it to be that obvious that the pockets there so I'm just going to ink the other three sides one like so and then it just comes down to gluing it down but when you glue it down you have to line it up you've got to line the pictures up so that it matches So hopefully I'm in camera here. Okay, so it just comes to lining up your picture. Bottom should match. It should all match in. You've just got to make sure that your petals and everything are lining up. Yep, that's about right. There we go. And then you just smooth it down. And there you have a ghost pocket. Yep. 
one ghost pocket now I will do it again under my other flap this one's a bit smaller I've picked this image for this one now this one's a bit different as well because um, I cut it differently but I will show you so the matte bit is five and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths so it's five and seven eighths eight and seven eighths and that's just going to stick down on there we're still recording Stick this mat down. Now, let me show you the original picture on this one. This was the original picture. Now, when I went to cut it, it was cutting through the roses and I didn't want to lose the roses. So what I actually did was I took the writing off the bottom. So when you come to doing your cut, your ghost pocket, you have to remember where you've cut them. So if you cut some off the bottom, you have to remember to remove that first and then do your pocket. Do you get what I mean? It's, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I will cut that bottom bit of writing off first. Now, I know that I cut it just to above the writing it was just on the writing it can make it makes it a bit difficult if you cut in your paper right in the middle of your paper cutting your page right in the middle your image you know what i mean so cut that bottom bit off um i keep things like that for collaging now that was five and seven eighths in so we're going to cut it at five and seven eighths in which is there and i'm probably for this one going to go to can you see i don't know if i'm in camera can you see i'm probably going to go to the top of that line so i'm going to cut just above it just above it like so And then I am going to tear it where I want it. Now, also with tearing, if I put my ruler this side and tear up, I get um, I don't get a white line, a white tear. Now, if you tear, hold your ruler on this side and tear the big sheet up, you will get a white line on your tear. Um, let me show you what I mean here. So if I tear it this, let me get a scrap piece so I can show you. So if I tear it this way, you get that white line. Whereas if you tear it this way, you still get that white line. You don't normally get that white line. That does make me look really silly, doesn't it? I don't know how to explain it. It's because it's not big enough. Do you see here, you get the white line on the one side. So if you tear paper that way, you get the white line. But if you tear it 
this way you get you don't get the white line on that part i don't know i'm not explaining it very well <laughs> just ignore me anyway i'm going to put it here it's just when i did it on the other one if i did, see look i'm not getting a white line showing here but on that side you have a white line showing so if you tore it the other way you would have the white line on this part instead of on this part i don't particularly like the white line on my ghost pockets it makes them stand out too much so i tried to avoid getting a white line tear line if you understand what i mean i don't think i'm explaining it very well today anyway let me uh glue those three sides not glue ink those three light sides right and again it's all you've got to make sure you line it up when you stick it down you need to do your lining up because then that way it looks like a ghost pocket well it doesn't look like there's a pocket there but there is a pocket there but like i say you don't have to do ghost pockets Personally, I love ghost pockets, but if you want to do something a bit different like I've done on the other one, it's your choice. You decorate these the way you want to, don't you? Sometimes it's not always that easy to line them up when you have a bit of a fuzzy picture. Just line it up until you're happy with it. I'm happy with it. And then we stick it down. And that's how I do my ghost pockets. Now the other thing we need to do is the backs of the flaps. Now I don't put anything on the back of my flaps. I just mat them and that's it. I don't put anything on. And I tend to mat them in a kind of plainish paper because there's patterns here and everywhere else so for these mats for this mat I've chose this paper and I have cut this down to um, both flaps are the same size they're five and three eighths by eight and three quarters so it's five and three eighths by eight and three quarters now we also with these because it's a flap up it's going to go here you have to round the top don't round your bottoms like we did on the other before we round the tops and then we ink it so we just round the tops ink it and stick it down that is all there is to this it's i don't do anything else to these i don't put anything on them or anything like that i just um cut them round them ink them stick them so you just put some glue on just checking that we're still recording just stick this down you don't want just boring brown cards there do you you want it to look pretty and that's that one done and then we have this other flap to do and for this one, I did um, 
the newspaper print paper and again see this is where it's easier to show you how you you corner it at the top so if you have got an image you don't want your image to be upside down because you called cornered the bottom you you get what i mean so you round your top corners ink it and then just glue it down and again this is the same size as the other one five and three eighths by eight and three quarters but if you're using different sized envelopes or cardstock or something like that then you have to measure your own cutouts and mat accordingly because they're not going to likely be the same as mine they probably won't be the same as mine so it's always best to do your own measurements for things like this And there. So now the only parts we have left to do is the front and back covers. So I'm going to start with my back cover. So with my back cover, I have chosen this image, which is actually the image that I used for my front cover on the original one. So it's this one. Let me show you how I did this one as well, because it so um the paper i used was this one so i cut this side out from my cover with the butterflies and then i cut this top card out from an off cut on another piece to use as a pocket um i just put a simple pocket on the back of my cover because it's the back cover. Do you know what I mean? You're going to be, it's going to be lying down. You don't really want bulk on the back, do you? Well, I don't. I don't know about others. If Obviously, if you want to embellish it and put clusters and charms and things on it, then ribbon and lace, it's up to you because it's your folio. But personally, I want it to sit flat on the back. But then saying that, on my other one that I'm doing with the um, Artie Mays kit, let me show you. On the back cover, I have actually put a bit of um, lace on it. It's not very bulky, but I did add a bit of lace. So if you want to, you can do that. There's no right or wrong way with these things is the that is the beauty of junk journaling there's no rules I'm just going to open that up so I can and then um like I say, I did ink it and I have inked the pocket as well. And I'm just doing that as a plain corner pocket. And I'm not adding anything to this. Okay, so I did get a bit of a cut out there. I don't know why it happens and I can only apologise. I'm sorry. So what I did was, I think I got up to just about to glue the pocket down on the back cover. So I've glued that down. So now the only thing we've got left is the front cover. I do do more for my front covers. So I'm just checking. Uh, yeah, I do a bit. I like to decorate them, but um, I don't usually put pockets on my front covers. I've never done that before, but I do. I do it with the folio for some reason. So this is the image I've picked for my front cover. It's all 
part of the same page and um, out of the scrap that was left over I've cut this bit out to put as my pocket so my front cover measures um, six and seven eighths across and eight and seven eighths down so it's six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths and I've cut that out and I've inked it I'm hoping it's not too bad with the sun we've actually got the sun shining today in Bournemouth which is a bit unusual as we've had nothing but storms lately and I do my videos right by the window so you might get some shut sun like that hopefully in shadowing but I hope you can still see it okay one day I'm going to get to do a whole video all the way through and it won't cut out at all. Hopefully, one day I will find the magic formula that everyone else seems to do. I do keep checking so that hopefully if it cuts out you don't miss too much. Smooth that down. And then I'm just going to glue my pocket on. Let's glue our pocket on. Again, I haven't done any measurements for this. I've just cut it out to the size I want, to the image that I want. It could have been bigger, it could have been smaller. There's no set size for it. You might not even want to put a pocket on yours. Like I say, I've never done pockets on covers before. I'm trying something new. And um, I'm not putting mine close to the edge. I'm going to leave a bit of a border on mine. Stick that down. Now, the other thing that I don't consider myself very good at is layering and collaging but it is something I'm trying to do more of. So I'm going to attempt to do some collaging on the cover now while it's done, while we're here. Um, like I say, I'm not great with it, but it's a personal preference, I think, and you could always do your own thing. Um, so I've got some of the Tim Holtz um, ephemera packs, and I'm just going to use some of those for it on mine i've also got some little bits of gauze in i might try and use see if i can find some more or cut off some more so yeah i thought i would um just do a little bit of layering with some bits of ephemera and that that i found well i didn't find them obviously i bought them <laughs> it's like i say it's a um not using that one that's for something else it's uh, um they're just tim holtz ephemera packs maybe put that there should we put a bit of let's see. so i guess how you do it's a personal isn't it these type of things Put a ticket there. I did have a little play around with it last night and kind of had it the way I wanted it. Um, let me get a bit of gauzing. I absolutely love gauze, I use it in everything, I put it under everything. I just really like gauze. And it goes such a long way as well. It really does. It just gives it that little bit of texture as well. Um, let's put a bit of gauze under here, I think. And over the ticket, maybe. And maybe this little scrappy bit under the butterfly.
Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm my worst critic when it comes to this stuff. I don't always know if I like it. Okay, that's the placement I think I'm going to use now. I ink the edges of absolutely everything. It's like an unwritten law for me. Ink it all. So I'm going to try and glue it while it's still in placement so I know where I had it. I love to collage, I just don't think I'm that great at it, so I'm trying to do more of it and improve improve on it as well, if you kind of get what I mean. Um, let's do this ticket next. Just like me ink it up. And glue that in just behind there. Um, let's do this flower next. I do find that some of his, um, Although I love his ephemera, I really do love it. Some of them are quite shiny, like the flowers and the butterflies. They kind of have a shine to them, which I think is unusual. And also, like with the butterflies, they have quite a harsh white, white um, outer part to them as well. Um, right, I'm not going to glue that leaf there because I wanted to tuck that underneath it. So let's leave that unglued. For now. Yeah, like that. Stick that down. Let's stick that bit of gauze down, I think. Just put a little bit of glue on there. Oh, dropped it. Don't mind my gauze being a bit loose. Hold on, I didn't. Let's just ink this quickly. Stick this down. Right, kind of want it to go under there. There we go. Let's see if we can get a little blob of glue under this. Put a little splodge of glue under there so we can stick that down. I don't want it to keep catching. And then put a little bit of gauze in up here.
try and ink some of that whiteness off of that butterfly. that little one there up here and you know what I think I might see if I can find a butterfly to put in there the shadow the sun's really come out now I'm really sorry if you're getting bad shadows okay let's see if I can find another titty butterfly in my little tin Um, this is a little tin that I keep all the little bits in. I don't know if you can see. There's a little one. Yeah, I think I might put a little butterfly up there as well. Let's put that to the side. And we'll just, if I can get it up. Oh, I'm really going to have to watch the shadow. Let me see if... Does that make a difference? That might make a difference. Can you see that better now? Or has that made it worse? You'll have to let me know if blocking out the sun makes it easier for you to see or harder for you to see because with the summer coming up, I imagine I'm going to get that quite a lot. So yeah, let me know if it's easier to for you to see what I'm doing with the sun blocked. And I think I'm just going to stick that one in there like that. And that's going to be my front cover. And that should give me a little pocket here. Right, so I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, it's going to be a couple of days now before I could do another video because I've got things I need to be doing out and about. So, But in the next video, what we will do is the finishing touches. We need to add our brads in here to hold our journal. Um, I will be decorating this side of this envelope and that side of the envelope I will probably add a little tuck spot to here put our string in and yeah that would be the end then so it's just the finishing touches really in the next one um, I'm sorry about the cutouts and the shadowing and everything but I hope you managed to follow along and um yeah, I'll do the next video in the next couple of days. And like I say, I will be giving this away in the giveaway when I get to a thousand, which I'm pretty sure won't be long next couple of days, hopefully. Um, please do leave a comment and let me know how it's going. I can't wait to see what you do. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.